we know that acute myeloid leukemia is extremely heterogeneous disease, a, a dance of different mutations. And you can try and lump these patients into broad categories, which the ELN classification system does. They're either favorable, and I don't know what's favorable about AML, but favorable risk, intermediate risk, or poor risk. However, it's very clear that within those categories, there's a lot of variation depending on which mutations a patient has. And core binding factor AML is just willy-nilly declared favorable. Everybody's favorable. Well, it turns out that's not true. We know that co-mutations influence that. And for example, uh, we've known that the presence of CKIT, certain CKIT mutations seem to drag that those outcomes down. And FLT3 ITD mutations are uh, less common, but certainly can be seen with core binding factor. And it had been our clinical impression that they also do quite poorly, but we really did not have enough numbers to make that declaration final. So what we did was a multi-center uh, collaboration where everybody pooled all of their cases that they had over the last several years of core binding factor AML with a concomitant FLT3 mutation and ask, what's the outcome for FLT3 ITD mutated core binding factor? And it turns out it's not so great. It doesn't look like favorable risk at all. It looks more like intermediate risk at best. And so again, uh, it just illustrates the interaction of these different mutations and that you really can't view AML in broad categories. You've got to break it down piecemeal for each patient by their mutations.